As we wrap, we'll talk carousel here. Uh, the big coaching news of the day is Sean Miller going to Arizona. And uh, I'll give some backstory on this. But before I do, Cobb, I just want your thoughts. How surprised you are over the idea that Sean Miller, a year after being fired from Arizona, and while he still has not yet been punished by the IARP from uh, from his level one coaching charge violation, uh, coach control violation charge, uh, nevertheless, it, it did not prohibit him from making a return from where he once came and going back to Cincinnati. Well, they had some pretty good choices, didn't they, right? If it, if it was going to be a former Xavier coach. Last I checked, uh, Chris Mack is also on the market. And, and Yes, but as I under, yeah, I, I don't think Chris Mack has any desire right now. To, I know what you're saying, but I, I don't think uh, it was a Mack versus Miller kind of race. Mack obviously, somebody floated Thad Mata as well. Was that you or did, was that somebody no, else? I, I, I put it out there that he was so good that might it be, uh, might it be something to consider? And then I had actually forgotten about this when Mata left Xavier. It actually did not; it did they, they didn't split on the best of terms. That was 04, I think. Uh, and I had forgotten that. Um, so there were uh, a few people, and then some, frankly, some Xavier fans who reminded me it's not going to be Thad. But uh, his win percentage was tremendous there, and Thad's obviously a, a very good coach. But uh, but no, this Miller was their top target basically from when they, surprisingly, the way they did it when they fired Steele all of what five days ago at this point. Yeah, I mean, hey, and good job by you, by the way. I, I, no, I'm not looking for that. I wanted to know how surprised you were. And if you think that, will this work? Are we going to look up in four, five, six years? Sean Miller's going to have Xavier, you know, making the tournament every year, making second uh, yeah, weekend runs. Do yeah, you think well, this, this, it might get labeled a retread, but it's, it's not a retread because you're not talking about a coach who flamed out and is looking to reclaim his former glory. You're talking about a coach who was still really successful, who recruited – uh, some of these players who are on a run right now with Arizona, that's pretty special. And you can say that the circumstances of their recruitment may have been suspect according to some of these uh, investigations that are going on, whatever. Uh, yeah. I think Sean Miller is still a really good coach. He's going to win some games. Oh, I, I think so as well. If you want the backstory on how this came to be, um, I'll try and be quick on it. So uh, Miller didn't coach this year, obviously wanted to get back in. Xavier and its athletic director, Greg Christopher, like this is a hire that he has to get right to save his job without a doubt. Can't miss on it. Xavier is not used to not making the tournament, you know, three consecutive tournaments. And that's exactly what happened under Steele. So they targeted Sean and I had sources tell me that that happened basically immediately. And then they had to go through their diligence on, okay, can we get, can we hire him? And what do we think is going to happen when he gets his punishment? Now, the interesting about this, and I didn't put the, I didn't want to bog my story down with this. Xavier's athletic director was on the committee on infractions. Okay. So, but he, but he should know like that. It should actually give him. Correct. Some on, That's know. exactly. So that was, that wasn't all of it, but that was part of it. He, he had the ability to both understand the case and also everything that's tied into that process, regardless of it's Sean Miller or whomever it is. And so that helped the process. I was also told that, you know, there are one or two very influential, important uh, financiers around the program that if they signed off on Miller, it would be a yes on down from the president and so on and so forth. That got done. Uh, but yes, there was red tape to work around to figure out if it could happen. South Carolina came hard. And I mean hard. I don't want to hear any denials after the fact. Uh, uh Sean Miller had a standing offer from South Carolina that I'm told was one million more per year. According to an industry source, one million more per year than what Xavier, because Xavier's not absolutely flush with cash. It's not poor or anything like that, but it doesn't have the resources to absolutely come hard the way that, frankly, a lot of SEC and other big conference programs can. So that caused Miller to uh, to vacillate for a little bit. Xavier was his preference, but again, they were waiting there. It was a weird, like leverage, non leverage situation. Like Sean Miller kind of had lever leverage because he had two standing offers. He he had both offers available to him on Saturday morning. Xavier also was able to leverage things and we'll never know the details of the contract because it's a private school, but there are no doubt things in that contract that are going to protect Xavier lest Sean Miller get himself into trouble again. So I don't really know who had more leverage in this case because Miller wanted to go to Xavier. That's where he went. And as I understand it, he went there for less money uh, and it's on a six year deal with all of that as backdrop. I do anticipate Sean Miller will be suspended next season. I've been told, and this goes back uh, months, I, I think that Miller and Arizona's case will get resolved in the fall. I think September's the earliest, and I think November's the latest, but I think there's going to be an intention to get that thing done before the season starts. Knock on wood, come find me when it's January and we don't still, still don't have an answer. The expectation is because 
Bruce Pearl didn't get hit that hard. And they had a postseason ban, self-imposed. Arizona did a self post postseason ban under Miller. Like, they, I don't think they're going to expect Miller to get more than three, five, six games. Ten, I think, would be more than they're expecting, but not unthinkable. Anything more than that, I don't think is on the table. So you take that, you take the suspension, you deal with it, then you got Miller for the long run. So we go. Xavier has its guy there. That's the story with Miller. Now, because of that, South Carolina is open. We kind of wait and see, to be honest. Uh, I've heard... Uh, BJ Mackey, a Wake Forest assistant uh, from South Carolina, is in there. I've heard Lamont Paris is in there. There's wonderment about whether or not Matt McMahon would be in there. I'm suspicious that he would. In fact, the interesting is, thing is McMahon was tied to Missouri. Now that's been reported that it's Dennis Gates, and there's going to have to be some official stuff from the university that has to get voted into on Monday for Dennis Gates, Cleveland State coach, to be the next guy at Missouri. Mississippi State is still open. Again, I think that will be Chris Jans. Kansas State is still open. We wait and see if that's a situation where I don't know if McMahon would want that. Jerome Tang is obviously a heavy candidate for that job there. We will see a few more of these close. And then, oh, by the way, I mean, I'm losing track of my days. I get was Todd. Did I report Todd Golden on Friday? I, I, yeah, I did. Because I was at the I was at my Wi-Fi went down when I'm trying to break the story. I'm trying to tweet this story for 10 minutes and there's no Wi-Fi or hardwire in the building. I was losing my mind. So Golden goes to Florida. Um that got worked out earlier in the week, and they get they get the San Francisco coach. There's been a lot. It's it's hard to keep track of all of this stuff, but uh, but yeah, that's kind of where we're at. Miller to Xavier is the big one, but there's a lot of moving pieces, and I think that there's the potential for Sunday for there to be another big job or two to close, and then on Monday another big job or two to close. Thoughts, cop? Go with it. Where yeah, you well, want. The, uh, well, Sean Miller going back to Xavier. The Big East feels very gettable right now. Villanova is Villanova. After Villanova, it feels second place in the Big East feels like anybody's game next season. Providence obviously won the league this year, regular season title, still dancing, phenomenal story. Ed Cooley, if he's sticking around, you know, could continue to have them at or near the top of the league. But beyond that, it, it feels open. Creighton's shown some flashes, but if Seton Hall's coming open with Kevin Willard going to Maryland and, and whatnot, it just kind of seems like a, a, a league oh, that is just... right for the taking with Sean Miller coming in oh, and having, yeah. having a chance to make some hay right away. There's so much to keep up with. And I would anticipate, I don't know when we will do an episode dedicated to carousel who went where I, who knows when that might be after the tournament, but you mentioned that uh, my expectation is that Willard to Maryland is done. Could be official Sunday. If not the day after it would stun everyone in the industry. If Kevin Willard isn't going to Maryland at this point, and how, actually, how are Turks fans, how are Turks fans feeling about know. that one? It doesn't seem like it's a, a move. Again, he's one in five in the NCAA tournament. Now, had they gone in 2020, we had a tournament. Maybe he wins one or two games, and he's not one in five. I, you know, I, I get all that, but um, it's tough to. Uh, I mean, Seton Hall was a complete no show, dude. TCU rolled him, and it's so at least Willard. Like Willard didn't beg off the question entirely at his press conference. He's like, I, I got to talk to my agent, and then if I'm not here and Shaheen's here, it'll be the happiest I've been. I get all that. Shaheen Holloway to Seton Hall seems like it should be the next move. Um, and I think that's probably where it'll go. Uh, but I did get told one name uh, for record. I can't say the name on the podcast. Sorry, that's that's just a, that's a tease for you. What I think I it'll probably be it. Holloway. No, you're not. Even if you guess it, I'm not going there. Even if you guess, I can't. I can't. Um, I got asked in the chat who's Tulsa going to hire. I don't know. I'll give you some names. Uh, I'll give you some. Names. I've heard. Okay, I've heard for Tulsa. I've heard Kyle Keller, Stephen F. Austin. I've heard Steve Lutz from Corpus Christi. I've heard. Eric Conco, Louisiana Tech. I've heard maybe like long shot Frank Martin. I don't know about that, man. I, I don't know about that. He's pretty good then, in the studio, actually. He is. He is. And then I want to say I got told one more, and I can't remember who. Um, uh, Grant uh, McCaslin? We'll, no, no, no. Grant McCaslin won't leave North Texas for Tulsa. He's got a better situation in so many ways at North Texas. He will not. Grant McCaslin, I believe, is also taking his name out of consideration for Kansas State. So we keep an eye on that. And then as far as LSU, who the heck knows? Maybe Matt McMahon will go to LSU. The thing with LSU is that there's an anticipation that because the school didn't move on Wade and just kind of accepted the situation that it was for three years, that it could be a one-year postseason ban. LSU could get a two-year postseason ban. So it's affected the job pool. I had one source tell me about 24 hours ago, eh, maybe like 26 hours ago, because it wasn't this late in the Saturday, that uh, it's a ton of guesswork on LSU right now because a lot of the big names that it went after, it's it's no's. It's no's across the board. So who's it going to be? If you're LSU and you can get Matt McMahon, you're over the moon about it. So, you know, 
keep an eye on that one. And that might take the longest to fill. But then again, as always, these situations can turn so fast. All it takes is the right candidate to talk to the AD or the person in charge, the people that they need to talk to. You get it done in a six hour span and a job thing can change like that. Or you can kind of get dragged out. So that's an abbreviated kind of tour of the carousel and where we are at. Saturday was a big time day. Oh, by the way, Archie Miller is going to Rhode Island. I think I think that stuff leaked like with two minutes to go in a really good game. And I was like, with timing, what are we doing here? Can we wait yeah, until we're in a stinker? You, you might have thought I, I want to say there was like an awesome game happening when the Archie Miller, when I got a text from a source that it was done, he was going to Rhode Island. I was like, really? Right now? We're doing this? His, his camp could have gotten maybe some more PR if they'd waited uh, for, for a more opportune moment in the news cycle. 